Hey guys, Justin here, jmichael8787 on Twitter, J Squared Cards and more on Facebook. I uh, just wanted to do a quick recap here of the video, uh, recap video of the weekend here. Um, on June 21st, which was yesterday, um, I ended up going to Columbus, Ohio. I went to the Franklin County Fairgrounds for the Hilliard Card Show. First time I had been there, I would heard about it for years. I usually only go to Canton area and Akron, or I'm sorry, Canton and Cleveland area for my card shows. I'm based out of Akron. Um, so essentially, I uh, went there, spent a little bit under a thousand, got some okay deals, got some deals I'll probably break even on, and then I got a few things I'll make some profit on. Um, got a lot of little odds and ends. I know a lot of people who buy and sell. I know a lot of people who do Twitter, Facebook, eBay, um, have stores. So it definitely will make my money back, plus a little bit more. Um, got a mixture of lower end stuff and some stuff that was a little bit more expensive. Nothing amazingly high end, uh, but just a lot of little nice cards here and there. Get a sip of the coffee here to make life better. Um, so like I said, I was about a two hour drive down there. Um, I seen some faces that I hadn't seen in years, and I seen some people that were regulars up in the Northeast Ohio area shows. Um, I definitely will go back. It's a, I believe, bi-monthly show. Um, so the next show will be around August, I want to say. Um, I do know, though, that the uh, with the COVID-19, uh, it did probably throw a, a wrench into their date, so I'll have to see exactly how the, the schedule pans out. So I also uh, do have some other videos I've been working on um, that are more time consuming. Um, I have what will be another part of uh, uh, basically some cut signature, not cut signature, I'm sorry, uh, like some index autographs that I found um, and a big deal. Um, they, uh, you know, the baseball players range from the 20s to 70s, 1920s to 1970s. Um, but I'm going to do at least one more video on those. I just like kind of giving the player's name and a little bit about them. Um, but the, the first video was pretty cool. Um, there was one guy who played in the minors from like 1923 to 1940. And he actually did have a couple uh, couple games and or at-bats in 1926 with the uh, then Brooklyn Robins who became the Dodgers in Brooklyn and then became the L.A. Dodgers. Um, reminds me of that famous line. Uh, Escape from Alcatraz um, with Clint Eastwood, where the guy was like, "How are the Brooklyn Dodgers doing?" And he's like, they, "He is like they moved to LA a few years ago." Um, so that just made me think of that. Um, anyhow, though, here's some of the uh, kind of some of the cheaper stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail, just because I, I want to spend more time with the uh, more expensive stuff. Um, but just some interesting stuff. I love cards that look like this. With like those sweet spot style cards, Cooper Cup, Romo, pretty cool card there. That's a nice one. Paul Pierce jersey card, Stephen Jackson, Fergie Jenkins. Uh, some more color parallels. Laramie Tunzel rookie number to ninety nine. Um, if I don't know if I still have it, but at one point I did have the gold gold variation of that card numbered to 10. Um, these are numbered to 99, I believe, or 49. But just some, you know, some rookie color. Uh, these were all mostly uh, at a dollar or under. It, like the autos and jerseys were mostly two. But I did find a good handful of one dollar ones. Those ended up being about two or three dollars. I think he charged me. It's out of a thousand. Um, that'll be a break-even card at worst. Some random Florida Gators autographs. Um, Andrew Luck, this is a uh, 2016 Hollow. Some of these have went up in price. Um, I mean, I, that's a definitely not going to lose any money buying it at a dollar. This was a dollar um, here. Uh, one of those, basically what was uh, Football Canada. So I don't know what exactly that was. It's not the Canadian Football League, I don't believe. It's... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what what it is, but it's one of those sets that um, Upper Deck put out. You know, Upper Deck's put out so many random sports and entertainment sets, uh, having lost the MLB license, NFL, and NBA license. 
I say that with no disparity, you know, without disparaging uh, Upper Deck because, I mean, I really respect, you know, they're trying to stay afloat, and I honestly hope that they get back uh, at least one one of those licenses that they lost because I'd, I'd buy some stuff from them if the price of wax goes down, of course. I'm not paying, you know, five times the retail price on stuff. I'm going to get a quick focus in here. Kareem Hunt, some Mahomes. Random autos and jerseys. Jordan Zimmerman, number to 25. Pretty cool Mark Sanchez patch for, I think I paid a dollar or two for it. TJ Leaf Prism. One of those medallion cards, 150 years. Um, so, you know, some of these two, I, uh, like I said, I spent a little bit under a thousand. Um, a lot of these dealers that I bought from, I've never done deals with, so I don't want to like lowball them. Not that I ever lowball anyone, but um, like the one guy I did did business with, I was just kind of like, hey, we can just see where we're at. You know, I picked out stuff. You know, I wasn't pushy. He, I let them set the price. You know, it's not like I said, yeah. oh, I'm not going to buy it for that. You know, um, the one guy I spent six hundred and seventy with, he wanted six ninety. I said, well, how about six fifty? Then we met at the middle at 670. Daddy, Daddy. Hi, honey. You okay? Okay. Daddy. Okay. I'll be in a minute. Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. Alex Mack. Uh, just lots of Ohio State stuff down there, too. Um, definitely Buckeye Nation there in Columbus. You can tell. Like, even. Well, I seen a furniture building that was like the size of a freaking like, plant. Um, like factory plant that was like definitely the Ohio State colors and I'm like yeah that that person is an Ohio State guy all the way so just some random color prisms optics uh, hollow foils rookies numbered stuff I, these ended up being like I think I I think I ended up getting them for about 60 cents each um, though these ones this one here was a little bit more but this is pretty cool I know my buddy uh, Ryan or my buddy Steve uh, Brightman, he's on Twitter also. Um, Ryan, and, Ryan and Steve are both on Twitter. Either one of them would like this car, but I, I actually kind of like it. It's pretty cool. It's one of those uh, Topps Triple Theds, and it's Vita Blue. I love that style uh, Elkland A 70s jersey there. It's so awesome. Um, that's number 3 of 25. This one here, I think I probably got it for like 3 bucks because I, I got a little bit of a deal on some of the stuff. Uh, but that's just a cool one. Sosa, Ramirez, Maglio, and um, also Vladimir Guerrero. Um, I always liked those jerseys from back in the Don Leaf playoff era. A couple more cards here. Aaron Judge, uh, Cracked Ice, but it's, it's not numbered. It might not be considered the Cracked Ice, but uh, for a, I think I paid a buck for it. Uh, paid a dollar for that one also, but just a couple, you know. I know people that can usually get $2 each for... Uh, a licensed MLB jersey card, so if they, if they can make some money off of it, and even if I break even on it, hey, I'm happy. Um, so now we're getting into some of the stuff that's a little bit better. Nothing amazing, but uh, yeah, but some, some of the stuff's a little bit better. So Duke Snyder, CC, Jacob Nix, Auto number to 25, uh, Game Gear, A Rod number to 10. This is. Uh, Kenny Hill, I don't even know if he's in the league, but I think I paid like three bucks for it with the discount. Uh, Jerry Rice jersey card, I actually bought this for, the guy had in this $2 box, so I don't know if there's any damage on it, but I will have to uh, look into it. That's a, a decent price though for a Jerry Rice jersey. Uh, Changing Stripes, McNabb, him with the Eagles and the uh, Redskins. Josh Allen jersey card, Lynch jersey. Um, that cool uh, 90s style and 70s style uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, jersey with that like off color orange, orangish red. Um, Wade Boggs Auto, bat numbered to 99. Frank Robinson, you know, I really like this card. It's number 25 of 25. Um, but as you can tell, I'm trying to get it into focus here. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, Mr. Robinson is no longer with us. Really cool guy, uh, first African-American Major League Baseball manager. 
Um, and that was with the Cleveland Indians, so I, that's pretty cool. That's my favorite team growing up, um, and it's always been my team. I've never liked another baseball team. Um, as a Browns fan, there's been times when I may have uh, rooted extra hard in a, in a game for another team. Not against the Browns, but just in general, but I'm sure you can imagine. Um, what I was going to say, though, was unfortunately with some of the older players, um, you know, I, I don't know how old the signature is. I know he died uh you know, last year, um, so this was probably one of his later signatures, you know, uh, probably within the last couple of years, um, but as you can see, you know, Mr. Robinson had a, uh, you know, hard time signing this, and that's one of the unfortunate thing, things about the sticker autographs, you know, if you are, um, you know, a little bit older, you might have a little bit of a harder time signing your name, obviously having to sign it in such a small box is, is kind of hard so that's one thing that I think they really need to think about with sticker autographs you know might need to uh, consider that when they're sending them out to the players who you know are a little bit older um, so anyways here we go we got Barry Sanders game used jersey it is game worn so I kind of like that um, I overpaid for this probably by like five bucks I think I paid ten for it I want to say just going off of uh, I said how about this and this and this for $45 and I had some other cards and I had some $1 cards so I think I allocated $10 towards this so I probably still overpaid for it by a few bucks but hey Jerry Lucas Auto with the Knicks only man to really give Michael Jordan a run for his money on something Dominique Wilkins and that was be at the dunk contest um, pretty cool card uh, Jim Jackson Auto Jersey Bunch of timeless teams bat cards. Uh, we got a D Baker, Reggie Jackson. Sorry, I'm trying to look through my viewfinder and that never works on me. That always gets me in trouble. Joe Rudy, Gene Tennis, Ron Say, Mark Bellinger, Sal Bando, Ron Swoboda, Tommy Henrich, Don Russ rated rookie KG. He had four bucks on it, um, but I think I ended up getting it for like two, two, three dollar range. Um, but still, I mean, that's a five dollar card right now. Um, easy. Number to ten, Mitch Trubisky. Um, that was kind of a good deal. I ended up getting that for like three bucks. Kareem Hunt Hollow. That's a cool one there. Um, this one was in a dollar box. That's a Marino Playoff Contenders leather. Um, and just some more random color and stuff like that. Um, so here we go. Some of those got mixed in. Um, try to keep those out of the higher end ones. Um, Jose Ramirez auto patch numbered eight of ten. I got that in a, in a big deal. Um, probably paid like thirty bucks for it, but I mean, I I think if he does good, if they have baseball this year, um, I can make my money back on it and then some. Um, game used glove. So this was a nice one here. Um, ended up getting this for about forty forty or so um, with a discount. Um, game used glove Derek Jeter out of 2000 Black Diamond it does have some minor flaws as, as common with the thicker game used card like that from the early 2000's you know that wasn't the norm for game used back then um, most game used relic cards were, were pretty thin they might be the, the size of two of the base cards two to three um, of course if it was a patch or something like this obviously it was more but the, what I'm getting at is they didn't necessarily store cards back then as well that were thick like that. Now it's, you know, now now if a card brand new was like that, um, or a couple years after it was out, it would be considered damaged. That kind of gets a pass. Um, really cool card. This is probably from Flair's bankruptcy sale because I haven't seen where it's numbered on here, and this would have definitely been numbered, a triple patch. Um, so Roger Clemens with the Yankees and Mark Pryor and uh, Josh Beckett, uh, Cubs and Marlins, respectively. Really cool card. Um, Bobby Hall, autograph. Bill Mazurok, Mazuroski. I'm sorry, I'm tired, guys. Game use pants. We got a uh, some guy named Khalil Greener. Uh, no, I know who Khalil Green is. He was a big prospect back in the day. Um, then some guy named Derek Jeter on there. Man, that Jeter probably really drags the value of that card down. Um, then we got Charlie Keller, game used bat. This is kind of a cool find. 
Um, JT Barrett, I think I, I think he charged me like five bucks for this card. Um, it's number two of five. Um, but I let him look at it. He had ten bucks on it. I thought for that price, I mean, ten bucks even for that card. If you can find the right buy, you'll probably double your money. Um, Eddie Stamkey bat card. One of my first Joe DiMaggio relics. It's a dual bat card. I wish it was a relic, and, or I mean, I wish it was a bat and a jersey. Quad bat of uh, basically uh, Jim Bottomley, Roger Hornsby, Bancroft, and Cam. So the 1920s era. National Treasures. Uh, one of my first Mike Trout jersey cards, believe it or not. Uh, him and Paul Holst. I, uh, you know, I love Albert Paul Holst, but his, his cards definitely uh, aren't, you know, in the, uh, unfortunately, his cards should be worth more money, Paul Holst, but they they don't sell as good as, um, as the Mike Trout would. So that probably would be more valuable if it was just Mike Trout. Um, Paul Molitor Auto, pretty nice looking. He has a really nice signature, in my opinion. Um, you know, pretty nice signature. Yogi Berra, um, number nine, eight of 20, uh, with the Yankee pinstripe. Uh, my buddy, my friend Jerry, he likes this card. I'd probably end up selling it to him. It's a 2003 Leaf Limited Jim Telme jersey, and that's numbered uh, three of 25. He had 20 bucks on it. So I want to come up with a price that's fair for my friend, but uh, just so that I don't lose any money on the deal. Carlton Fisk, number 42 of 50, uh, White Sox Auto, pretty cool. Um, he had 35 on that, but I got I, I got a deal on all these guys. So the sticker price um, isn't necessarily the truth, especially on stuff like that. Like the Tomei, I think he charged me probably like 15 for. Um, Edgar Martinez, I got this for like $10 as part of a bigger deal, um, a really nice autograph, um, and that one is number 99 of 99, not that like 1 of 99 or 99 of 99 or jersey number of 99 means much these days, but still kind of cool. Uh, so we're getting into some of the better stuff now, a um, little bit better stuff at least, uh, but there were some, some better ones in there too. I'm just going to shut up. Joe Maurer, SPX, Triple Game Use Patch, number 14 of 15. I believe. Or, yeah, 14 of 15. Or 11 of 15. I believe 14. So, this one here, I I, uh, I don't know how I noticed this, but this is signed by two different people. Um, I didn't even think. I just saw it, I saw it in a $2 box, and now I know why it was in a $2 box. So that's Jason Giambi's auto, and then down here we have Lord knows who. <laughs> um, just so you know, I'm not a horrible dad. My uh, my mother is with my uh, son out there, so if you hear him crying, <laughs> um, so that's a gold auto. Um, but yeah, I that card's not really worth anything. I am going to ask my buddy Ryan though. He's a big A's guy if he recognizes who whose autograph that is. Um, I did take it out a little bit just to see uh, if that was, you know, to see if that was like on the top loader or if it was on the sleeve, and it is on the card. Um, so next we have this one, Marcus Mariota and um, Derek Henry, or I'm sorry, Melvin Gordon, I apologize, um, numbered 6 of 15, and on the back... Um, Sorry, this one's a little bit harder to focus because of the reflective case it's in. Uh, basically just a quad patch. Uh, Mari Cooper and Tevin Coleman. Um, kind of a cool card, um, but I think he had he had 25 on it. I think I might have paid like 15. I probably definitely overpaid on that, but I just I liked it when I looked at it. I was like, that's such a cool card. I got to get it. Um Marcus Allen, game use patch. Um, I don't know if he, I think he played one or two seasons with the uh, Colts. Um, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that is a patch number 22 of 32. For that one he had 20 on it, but again, I think he charged me like 10 for it. Um, at least, uh, like I said, some of them I, I paid handsomely for. Um, some of them weren't the best deals on earth, but it was a fun day. Larry Nance Auto, 
uh, Griffey and Sosa dual bat, Yogi Berra. Another one of these triple patches. So on this one here, you got Kirk Schilling, Kerry Wood, and Dontrell Willis. I'm gonna save the, uh, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna save this one here for last. Um, Cheater, Jersey, Johnny Benchado out of 15. Uh, Sony Michel, uh, Patch. Um, we got a Bob Trumpy Auto. Another uh, Jerry Lucas Auto, and that's with New York Knicks also. It's a nice autograph. He has a really nice signature. And Kerry Rochelle, game use patch number 19 of 30. So this was the most expensive card of the day. And we got a Roger Maris, that's part of the game use patch, Mickey Mantle game use bat, and Elston Howard game use jersey, numbered 5 of 15. So this card here basically defines uh, 1950s and 1960s Yankees. That Maris patch is sweet. Um, he was a little bit high on this. He had 150, um, but I figured out a way to get enough stuff to get it down to a price that I uh, could make some money off of it. Um, but he was a real nice guy. Um, you know, all the dealers there in Columbus were pretty good. Like I said, it was the first time dealing with some of them, um, and they were all really, really good for the most part. Um, uh, you know, from what I saw, uh, everyone was real nice. So it was definitely a if you live within even a couple hours like me, it's worth the trip. Or at Oregon, when we do have our Canton card show here, if you're within a couple of miles, there are a couple of hours from it. It's worth the trip also. Um, but you know, I, you know, I it was a good day of buying, lots of fun. Um, but that definitely made my day. You know, being able to get that. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, all the dealers were nice. It wasn't a bad drive. We ended up uh, getting a hotel for the night. My mom did go with us only because she needed a chance to get out of the house. And uh, also, you know, she was nice enough to watch the kids for a little bit. And uh, she got to have some fun, too. Um, so everyone had fun. It was a win-win situation. And uh, I appreciate you watching this here. Be sure to subscribe. Go ahead and hit the like button. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. i got to do a big recap video for purchases earlier in the month and get it out of the way. And i got some uh, other videos with my uh, index cards coming soon. So be sure to like and subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Facebook. If you have anything, you any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.